Today we're going to demonstrate the use of the Rionet pre-registration board in transparency. Now this pre-registration system comes in two forms. The first form and the less expensive form is the pre-registration transparency. This transparency covers up to your 16 by 16 all the way up to 18 by 24 platens and also covers 20 by 24 screens and 23 by 31 screens. Now it can accommodate smaller platens and larger screens or smaller screens because this board is all based around a center point or a center line. The transparency and the board are basically the exact same thing, just a different form of media. This you don't need a lit source. This transparency you do need either a lit light table or some type of lit background in order to use it effectively. Right now we're going to show how to lay out your artwork, set up the artwork, and burn screens based on this transparency format. Now these pre-registration transparencies and boards will save a lot of time in the darkroom, your results will be more consistent, and you'll have more favorable prints once you get to the press. This will also hopefully eliminate errors once you get to the press and start setting up your job, realizing that your screen is out of registration too far in order for the micro-registration to compensate for it. The traditional way screens are set up or registered with films is going to be using the screen, a tape measure, or some type of T-square to measure off the registration points, and then marking those down on a piece of paper so you get each transparency in the same spot on the screen. Now obviously the goal for registration is to get your transparencies on the same exact spot on the frame itself, so when you get to the press, your micro adjustment is very minimal, if at all. Now let's talk about artwork. Whether you're using CorelDRAW, Illustrator, or Photoshop, there's a couple things that you want on your transparencies. The first is registration marks. Looking at this transparency, you can see the registration marks in the four corners of the film. Now these are pretty fine detail registration marks. Your registration marks don't have to be as fine detail as this. This was printed out of Photoshop using Accurip, and Accurip or a RIP processor will make these fine detail registration marks. The second thing that you need is center lines. You always want to have center lines in the center of your film, right there, in order to easily center your screen, not only when you're registering it with a pre-registration board or pre-registration transparency, but also when you're registering on the press. Center lines on your film, center lines on your pre-registration system, and center lines on the palette when you get to the press. So setting, setting up your job is extremely fast and easy. You don't have to measure out and make sure that your job is in the center. Now keep in mind you also want to center your image in your artwork program. You don't want your image sitting over to the left or right side of your palette in your artwork program because then your center lines will come in right here instead of the exact center of the image. So you want to crop your image in your artwork program whether you're using Photoshop, Corel, or Illustrator to ensure that your center lines are in the exact center of your image itself. These are a form of registration marks used in CorelDRAW. As you can see, much more simple, but you still have your center lines and you still have your registration marks. Either form of registration marks will work, whether you want the detailed one or the simple ones. Let's zoom in and show registration on the transparency in the palette itself. This is a light table set up with the pre-registration transparency between a yellow piece of plastic and the glass itself. We're putting the glass on top in order to protect the transparency film. Now if you're not putting the glass on top, the transparency is actually printed on the reverse side so that if you're putting your screen on and off and pulling it on, it won't scuff the actual print itself. It's only going to be scuffing the plastic. You can also use the hard form of the pre-registration board and put that directly over a light table. You can put that even directly over a low wattage exposure unit or you can just lay it on a table and use it without a backlight. For demonstration purposes, we're going to show it with the transparency form underneath the light table. There's a few things that you're going to need in order to complete this process. The first is the transparencies, obviously, a pen, a tape, and then obviously your screens. Let's go ahead to set up. Now, taking a look at the way this pre-registration board is laid out, you can see that it has a center line. It has several adjustment lines, depending on how big your print is, what kind of press you have, how big your palette is. Typically, if your neck sits right here, your center print is going to be roughly right here. You always want your center print about three fingers down from your neck. So if your neck's going to sit on the top, 
you want your center print to start here. Depending on how your press is set up, this could vary, but use these registration guidelines in order to know the horizontal and vertical placements of the print once you get to registration. Down here you see some very simple instructions. Right here is going to emulate your screen clamp, so this is where your screen is actually going to come to rest at. This pre-registration transparency is actually set up for 20 by 24 and 23 by 31 outside dimension of the frame. Now we use this transparency format and these frame sizes because these are the most popular frame sizes. However, since this has a center crop line, as long as you're centering your screen to the transparency template itself, you can use a 19 by 22, an 18 by 20, or even a larger than 23 by 31 screen. Just keep in mind that your screen needs to be centered to the center line of your pre-registration template. We're going to demonstrate two different ways to set up the job. This is a back print, so we're going to want this print to come down about two fingers or about an inch and a half below our t-shirt mark on the back of the shirt. Now let's say the t-shirt mark is going to be right here. We're going to bring it down two inches, which that's going to roughly place my registration mark right here on this first horizontal line. So the first thing I want to do is center my transparency. Let's get the other one out of the way. So I come down and center the transparency on the palette itself. Now I'm going to make a mental note knowing where my transparency sits and if you can line your registration marks or your center crop marks to a specific point in the actual transparency registration template, then that'll help setting the next one up a lot easier. This center crop mark is actually coming right where this vertical line meets and the horizontal line meets. So next time I set the second transparency up, I'm going to put it in the approximate same spot. The next thing you're going to do is apply tape on your transparency so it transfers onto the screen. Now when you're setting up a job with the screen facing the opposite direction, you have to reverse your transparency. But since you're setting the screen with the print side down on the pre-registration template, you do not have to reverse your transparency. You want to see the transparency on the pre-registration template as it will appear on the shirt. We recommend using single-sided scotch tape and just take your scotch tape, optically clear if possible, and place it halfway underneath your transparency film and halfway over so when you put the screen on top of it, it will stick to the frame. Let's set this up one more time. Again, we're checking to make sure that it's both centered in the center of the frame and not cockeyed. So we are on right there, we're on right there, and then we are on in the center if we just move it up just a tad. Now we're going to take our screen and place it onto the light table. Now we're going to slide it in to the back of the pre-registration virtual screen clamp. Now if you want, you can create stops for your light table, something that you tape down, or the board itself, you can create stops. Once it's centered, we're going to make sure this is a 20 by 24 frame. It's sitting inside our frame dimensions. And then we're going to lay it flat down on the table. Once flat down on the table, we're going to take the tape, and by pressing down on the screen, we're going to transfer the tape onto the screen itself. Now, right now, we only use two pieces of tape, but if we wanted it to work a little bit better, we could have used four pieces of tape, one in each corner. Now, we're going to make sure it sticks, bring it up, and then tape it the rest of the way down, just maybe a couple more pieces of tape. And then we're ready to go for exposure. To set the second color up for this job, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to lay the transparency down. We're going to center the outside registration marks to the horizontal line and the center crop marks to the vertical line. We're going to make sure it's in the same spot and centered. You can either tape the transparency before you put it on or afterwards. You tape it before you put it on, you don't have to reset the job up. Make sure it's centered. Come grab our screen. Slide it back into the clamp. 
let it fall down. Make sure the screen is centered too. Let it fall down. Tape up the marks. Finish taping the transparency. Now both these colors are ready to expose. Because we put the screen in the same approximate spot on the pre-registration template and the film was in the same spot on the template itself, registering this job when it comes to the press is going to be extremely fast and easy. We're not going to have to second guess ourselves to know, hey, did I put this an inch too low or an inch too high or possibly an inch too far to the left? It's going to be the exact same spot on this screen as it was on the first screen that we set up. Now let's show the second method of registering transparencies to multiple color screens. Using the second form of registration, we're actually going to take the film and tape it down to the board or the pre-registration transparency on the light table. So first we'll center our film, both horizontally and vertically. And then we'll tape the film down. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take each screen one at a time and place it onto the light box over the pre-registration template. We're going to make sure the screen is centered and then what we're actually going to do is we're going to mark centered towards the back and then also centered side to side. We're going to take the screen and we're going to mark using a sharpie where the film registration points meet on each screen. Keep in mind you know which registration marks you're using if your screen uses like a three or two registration point setting. So take that, we lift it up. We take our second screen and we do the exact same thing. Center the frame out. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take the marked screens and put the transparencies on them. Now since we're putting the transparencies on the flat side or the shirt side of the screen, we're actually going to reverse them. Then we're going to line the registration points up to the sections where we marked them on the screen itself and tape it down. We're ensuring that the registration marks on each film is hitting the correct spot where we made the marks previously when we laid the screen on the transparency template. This method can be a little bit faster and more efficient when you're doing a multiple color job that requires a lot more frames, let's say a six color or an eight color job. You only have to measure out the transparency once on the template and then just come in and mark your screens accordingly. And then after that, you're only having to handle each transparency once and just taping it onto the frame. Obviously, since your screen registration marks are on the same spots on each of the film, they're going to line up exactly to where you made the marks up on the frame, making the registration process for an eight color job or a six color job a lot faster than having to major out each transparency on the template itself. Using the hard form of the registration board, these methods are exactly the same. You're lining the frame up in the same spot. You're registering the screen in the exact same position. And your results are going to be exactly the same. Now keep in mind that you want to do this whole process in a light safe environment because the screen itself is unexposed. If you're putting the board or the transparency over a hot light source like an exposure unit, you want to make sure that the light is not UV reactive underneath the template or underneath the pre-registration board. You can do this by putting a sheet of ruby lith or amber lith underneath the board in order to create this as a yellow light rather than a bright white light. 
The light that you see coming up underneath the transparency and the registration board is not bright enough and it is diffused into a yellow light. So this is optimal for setting up your screen without having to worry about pre-exposing them. The next thing that you want to cover is that no matter what size of palette, whether it's a 1616, a 1414, an 18 by 24, whether it has a neck attachment or not, you always want to make sure to carefully center line your palettes. When you come to set the screen on the palette, you simply use the center line and use your crop marks that burned into the screen to center that screen up and ensure that you're going to have a center print every single time rather than worrying if the print's going to be left or right on the palette itself. This concludes our instruction on the Rionet pre-registration template system. We hope you've enjoyed this and learned a lot. This system will hopefully save you a lot of time both in pre-registration, exposure, and when you actually come to setting up your job over and over again on your press. Thanks for watching and have a great day.